The Boardwalk Deli is open. Epcot tours will be returning soon. Yay, behind the scenes. New booths at Food and Wine Festival and lots more to cover. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. We got a lot of news for you today. A major form of transportation will be closing temporarily. Another movie about a classic Disney attraction has been rumored. And Disney will soon lift some of the COVID vaccine requirements for cruising. The Boardwalk Deli is now open. Yep, formerly the home of the Boardwalk Bakery, this deli shop now serves baked bread, hot and cold deli sandwiches, and bakery items for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. On the outside, you'll find decor indicating that they've got fresh baked items morning, noon, and night. There are lots of fun little puns and details to look for in this new spot. And of course, we are so glad that Hugh G. Croissant is still the proprietor at the Boardwalk Deli, just like he was at the Boardwalk Bakery. For breakfast, you can grab house-baked bagels along with a selection of schmears, as well as breakfast pastries. Don't worry, they still have the Mickey Cinnamon Roll on the menu and even warm bagel sandwiches, including an everything bagel sandwich and a plant-based ciabatta sandwich. For lunch and dinner, choose from hot and cold sandwiches served on ciabatta, focaccia, or traditional marble rye bread baked in-house. You can try classics like an Italian sub, a warm pastrami Reuben, and even a roasted chicken sandwich. But you can get more than just a sandwich. All sandwiches come with your choice of house-made chips, creamy coleslaw, or soup. And for dessert, check out their signature cannolis or scones. They even have black and white cookies that they call half moons. You can head over to Boardwalk Deli between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. each day to check out those new menu items. And if you want our full review of breakfast and lunch at the new Boardwalk Deli, then head to our website at DisneyFoodBlog.com. Now we've got some new booths at the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. And we were there, of course, to try them all. The new booths include the Noodle Exchange, Mac and Eats, Hawaii and Coastal Eats. So what are our thoughts? If you're looking for some tasty noodles, broths that are full of flavor, and some more unique dishes at the festival, the Noodle Exchange is a good booth to check out. Granted, warm noodles are probably more enjoyable on a cooler floor today, but they were still very tasty and the offerings are different when compared to some of the other marketplace offerings. This year, the Mac and Eats booth lands squarely in the middle for us. Nothing in particular stood out as a best of the fest menu item, but we did really enjoy the Cowboy Mac and the plant-based Chili Cheese Mac. We were a bit disappointed with the traditional version, but we definitely still recommend stopping by this booth to try out something, especially if you're a pasta lover. Overall, the Hawaii booth did live up to the hype though. This is a delicious booth with a lot of options for all kinds of eaters. The food here is adventurous while still having some familiarity. We can honestly say we enjoyed everything we tried. If you want some tropical flavors or some unique dishes that you most likely won't be able to find at home unless your home is Hawaii, then this is definitely a booth you shouldn't miss. And that passion fruit cheesecake is a great dessert option to help you fill out your cheese crawl. And lastly, if you're someone who likes seafood, you'll probably find something to like at Coastal Eats. We loved everything we tried at this booth and may have even found a new best of the fest contender. So this booth is pretty much only seafood, so if that's not your jam or you've got picky eaters on your hands, then it may not make sense to go to Coastal Eats, but I will say I'm not a huge seafood lover and I still love that scampi dip, so might be worth it. We got our full reviews for every booth on our website at DisneyFoodBlog.com if you want to go check those out. World Princess Week is coming up. It's part of the Ultimate Princess celebration that began last year, and Disney just announced all of the special offerings we can expect from this royal affair next week. The celebration lasts from August 21st through August 27th, and Disney is bringing us all sorts of ways to commemorate the princesses, like officially introducing Raya from Raya and the Last Dragon as the newest Disney princess. Not only that, but kicking off World Princess Week is Grammy Award winning recording artist Brandy with a new music video for Starting Now, shot in front of Sleeping Beauty Castle. You can catch that video on the Disney Parks blog and their social media channels on August 22nd. So how will the parks around the world celebrate World Princess Week? Well, over in Disney World, guests staying at Disney Resort Hotels can catch movies under the stars featuring all sorts of princesses. And you can head to Disney Springs on August 21st and August 27th for a royal DJ dance party. Guests can also participate in a Tiana and Navi inspired paper crown giveaway in Epcot 2. And of course, there will be many food and beverage items inspired by our favorite princesses. In fact, if you want to see all the fun themed treats for Disney World and Disneyland, we've got them on our website. Disneyland guests can join Disney artist and historian Stasia Martin at Wonderground Gallery as she draws Disney princesses before your very eyes. And at Disneyland Paris, guests can catch the Royal Promenade, a cavalcade of princesses and queens. And you just might find Princess Aurora and dancers behind Sleeping Beauty Castle for Aurora welcome greetings. 
Next, the Mickey pumpkin wreaths are back. When walking toward the castle on Thursday, we noticed something a little different. We spotted those burnt orange colored wreaths off in the distance and finally our Mickey pumpkin wreaths have returned. Now you remember last year they did Cinderella pumpkins for the 50th anniversary and then they took away the Mickey pumpkins altogether. Now the Mickey pumpkins are back in front of the castle. We'll see if they get spread out on the streets as well. Right now the Cinderella wreaths still line Main Street USA. And I know you want to take a picture next to those Mickey wreaths, but you know what you should wear? Our exclusive Hocus Pocus shirts. You can go to our website at DisneyFoodBlog.com to get one for yourself. I'll even put the link in the description to make it easier for you. You're welcome. And of course, our pumpkin vibes are the perfect shirts to wear for that picture too. Be sure to check those out in our store. It's merch.dfbstore.com. Head on over there and pick up your Halloween tees. The Winnie the Pooh and Tigger meet and greet is finally back in Magic Kingdom. We spotted a big line over by the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh, and we knew that it could only mean one thing. Our friends from the Hundred Acre Wood have returned. During our visit, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger were meeting guests from 11 a.m. to 2.45 p.m. Of course, the characters and visit times are all subject to change, so be sure to visit the My Disney Experience app for more information on what to expect from this meet and greet when you're there. And while walking down the middle of Main Street, U.S., say we spotted the Dapper Dan's looking a little bit more autumnal, let's say. We can officially say fall has hit the park now that the Dapper Dan's are wearing their fall costumes. In their dark red, orange, green, and white stripes, they sort of blend into the Halloween decor around them. So be sure to look for them during your next trip to Magic Kingdom. Disney's been doing quite a few snack-themed merchandise collections recently, and we are here for them. Say hello to the Mickey Premium Ice Cream Bar Collection. This new series is dedicated to the classic chocolatey treat, and that's exactly what the items smell like, chocolate. We already spotted this stuff in the parks, but now you can buy it on Shop Disney. First is the Mickey Mouse Ice Cream Bar Spirit Jersey. The shirt is made to look like dripping ice cream and has the Walt Disney World logo on the back. It comes in adult sizes from extra small to XXL, and you can snag it online for $74.99. Next, we've got a Loungefly Mickey Bar Mini Backpack. It looks good enough to eat. It's got that giant Mickey Bar on the front and a Mickey Bar pattern all over the sides and back for 85 bucks. If you want the look from head to toe, you'll need to pick up the Mickey Mouse Ice Cream Bar Crocs. Each shoe comes with an all-over Mickey Bar print as well as a molded vinyl Mickey Bar on the top. Pick up a pair of the shoes in a variety of sizes for $59.99 each. And finally, we've got the Pièce de Résistance, the Mickey Mouse Ice Cream Bar Mini Ears. These adorable ears have a melty ice cream bow with a Mickey Bar in the middle. We found them in the parks a few weeks ago, but now you can order a pair online for $29.99. Big news, three behind-the-scenes tours are coming back to Epcot. With the ongoing transformation and the 40th anniversary on October 1st, it is a big year for this park. Now more exciting news because three tours are returning on October 2nd. First of all, the fan favorite behind the seeds tour is coming back to the Land Pavilion. This hour-long walking tour gives you an up-close and personal view of amazing plants and insects and fish <laughs> throughout the four state-of-the-art greenhouses. That's quote from Disney, amazing plants. There you go. According to the Disney World website, this tour will cost $35 when it returns. Still a bargain, but not as cheap as it used to be. Scuba certified guests will be happy to know that Epcot Sea's Adventure Dive Quest is coming back as well. During this one, those who are certified can explore the 5.7 million gallon saltwater environment at the seas and get to look at the marine life up close. This tour is $219 per person. And finally, Epcot Sea's Adventure Dolphins in Depth will be available once again. Guests who embark on this one can meet bottlenose dolphins at the seas and talk to the experts who care for them daily. The two hour encounter is very limited each day and will cost $199 per person. These returning tours will be on sale starting August 22nd, so mark your calendars if you hope to book one for an upcoming trip. Reservations for the tours can be made through the Disney World website or the My Disney Experience app. Monorail Lime has returned to service and we had to hop on and see what it looks like. So what's new with it? Well, looks a bit refreshed on the inside with that vibrant design we've seen implemented on the other refurbed and refreshed monorails. Now, a refurbished monorail might not be something you'd ordinarily notice just when busily making your way through the hotels and betwixt Magic Kingdom and Epcot. But now that you're a real Disney pro, you'll know how to look for this updated form of transportation. 
And you've heard about the Haunted Mansion movie that's in the works. You may have watched the Jungle Cruise movie, but another Disney ride will soon grace your screen in movie form. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is getting its own show. That's right, folks. Hang on to those hats and glasses because this here is going to be the wildest movie in the wilderness. And we've got all the details. Sources have indicated that Bert and Birdie, who directed the majority of Disney Plus's Hawkeye series, are in negotiations to direct a movie all about Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Reportedly, Lucky Chap Entertainment and Scott Free are producing the Thunder Mountain film, and Kieran and Michelle Mulroney are writing the movie's script. Deadline noted that, despite being in Disney's good graces following Hawkeye, Bert and Birdie need to deliver a presentation to studio execs, and sources have indicated that Disney was excited from the start at their vision of what this movie could be. Now, this is super exciting news. Back in November 2021, we noticed that Beverly Sunset Boutique and Hollywood Studios, which, by the way, used to be Sweet Spells, if you remember, way back in the day, that had been closed for several days. And at the time, a cast member told us that Disney was so low in stock on merchandise that there wasn't even enough to put in the store. So we expected to see the store reopen in a few days, but it has been closed ever since until now. Now, we stepped inside to see what the merchandise situation looked like, and it seems like they got plenty of stuff now, including a lot of fun monsters ink items we weren't the only people there other guests were doing a bit of shopping there was plenty to look at so it seems that the merchandise supply problems disney was having last year may be taking some steps forward at least for now COVID vaccine requirements are changing for Disney Cruise Line. Currently, DCL requires all guests ages five and older to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 for sailings leaving from U.S. and Canadian ports. But soon, that COVID-19 vaccine requirement will be changing in a big way for little ones who are sailing. According to the Disney Cruise Line website, starting September 2nd, 2022, for all sailings that leave from U.S. or Canadian ports, Disney will only be requiring guests ages 12 and older to be fully vaccinated at the time of sailing. Disney does note, however, that it highly recommends that those guests ages 11 and younger to be fully vaccinated before sailings. So not required, but highly recommended. Keep in mind that COVID-19 testing is also still required for those looking to board Disney cruise ships. Fully vaccinated guests have to provide proof of a negative COVID-19 test result that is taken one to two days before setting sail in order to be exempt from testing at the cruise terminal on embarkation day. Guests who are not fully vaccinated have to provide proof of a negative COVID-19 test that is taken one to three days before the sale date. There is then a second COVID-19 test done on embarkation day. The big vaccination change really only affects these younger guests, but it still constitutes a big shift for those traveling with kids under the age of 12. Now, the Disney Skyliner has announced some closing dates temporarily in 2023. If you're headed to Disney World in the future, be warned that Skyliner will be closing for refurbishment soon. The dates to look out for are January 22nd to the 29th, 2023. We saw a similar closure earlier this year around the same time, so it's possible this is just yearly routine maintenance. We spoke with a cast member via chat who confirmed the closure dates. If you're heading to the parks around this time, keep this in mind and plan for alternate transportation. Both Epcot and Hollywood Studios are within walking distance of a few hotels, and so is Magic Kingdom. You'll also have the option of taking a Disney bus or a boat depending on your current location and destination. If you're trying to get somewhere in a hurry, consider using a rideshare service like Uber or Lyft. These are some of the important factors you'll have to consider when choosing your Disney hotel. Lucky for you, we got tons of videos on our channel about every hotel, ranking them, telling you secrets about them, all kinds of cool stuff about the hotels. You can watch this playlist here for some help. Now, big news on a missing drink. The Fuzzy Tauntaun is back. Kind of. Now, one of the most iconic drinks on the menu over at Oga's Cantina in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is the Fuzzy Tauntaun, and it was removed from the menu earlier this year at both Disneyland and Disney World due to supply issues on those buzz buttons. Now, we recently saw it return to Disneyland, but now it has also returned to Disney World with a slight twist. Earlier this year, a cast member told us that the flower used in the drink was reportedly going extinct when we asked why the fuzzy tauntaun had been taken off the menu. The cast member also said that Disney was working to quickly find something to replace it and was testing various formulas behind the scenes. Now the fuzzy tauntaun is back on the menu at Disney's Hollywood Studios, but the drink's formula has changed a bit. This version of the drink has more of a slow build to the mouth-numbing sensation. According to the cast member we spoke to, they couldn't get the same ingredients they once used to make the foam, so now the foam is created using ground-up seeds that still cause the numbing effects. That's why the effects of the drink are slower and why the foam looks different. Note that these changes appear to be specific to the Disney World location, from what we understand. Of course, we had to give this new one a try, and the first thing we noticed is that yes, the foam 
film does look a little bit different. As the cast member said, there is a slower build up to the numbness, but it only takes a few sips before it kicks in. So don't worry, this one's still a lot of fun. The drink still has a sweet and fruity flavor, and we honestly didn't notice anything too different about the taste or texture. It was still very light and the peach flavor was great. It's smooth and the foam melts in your mouth. For the great taste and the numbing sensation, it's one of those drinks likely worth getting at least once. Disney recently announced three new soda shop style drinks at the Boardwalk to go along with the Boardwalk Deli. And you know we had to head over there to try them all out. All the new drinks can be found at Boardwalk Ice Cream, which is known for sweet treats like ice cream sundaes and milkshakes. Keep in mind that this spot doesn't open until 3 p.m., but it does stay open until 11 p.m. Now, all the drinks we tried are non-alcoholic, so kids and adults alike can enjoy these. The first is a new cherry limeade. It's made with amarena cherry, cold-pressed lime juice, and sparkling water. You can get it for $4.99. We're big fans of a classic cherry limeade, and this one is fantastic. The lime isn't too strong, although you still get a tart flavor to offset that sweetness from the cherry. Next up is the Tropical Orange Seltzer, which also costs $4.99. This is made with orange and pineapple juices in sparkling water. This was another win in our books. It's fruity, refreshing, sweet, and tastes just like summer. If you enjoy tropical drinks and especially bubbly ones, this is perfect for you. We also thought that kids would enjoy this one as it has simple flavors that aren't quite as strong as the cherry limeade. Now, the last of the drinks is a new egg cream. We were very curious about how Disney was going to tackle one of the quintessential deli drinks. It's made with chocolate flavor, milk, and sparkling water. You can get it for $5.29. There's definitely a strong chocolate flavor in this one. It tastes just like chocolate milk, but with a lot of bubbles. And an egg cream drink isn't a new concept, of course. It's about as vintage as it gets, but if you aren't familiar with the flavors or if you're a picky eater, then this might be a divisive one for your family. The seltzer combined with the creaminess of the milk can be an acquired taste. Overall, we thought the first two drinks, cherry limeite and tropical seltzer, were great summer drinks to sip as you walk around the boardwalk. That egg cream drink is a little more more niche, but if you want those true vintage boardwalk vibes, then it might be a must try. Okay, I know you all love Starbucks cups, so I had to make sure you knew about some new tumblers Disney has released online. First, check out the Magic Kingdom tumbler. This one has Mickey Mouse, with some popcorn, Cinderella Castle, Dole Whip, spinning teacups, and more Magic Kingdom icons. Now the Starbucks logo is on the other side, and all of these come with a snug fitting press on silicone sipper lid, quote unquote, from Starbucks. <laughs> Next is the Animal Kingdom tumbler. This one has a green background and Minnie Mouse on it. And for all the fans of Hollywood Studios out there, check out this one. This cup has Mickey on the front with the rock and roller coaster, Tower of Terror, a Mickey pretzel, Pixar ball, and more. The last Disney World one is the Epcot tumbler. This has a pink background with Minnie Mouse. She's surrounded by Spaceship Earth, Test Track, Eiffel Tower, and other Epcot staples. And there are Disneyland tumblers as well. The Disneyland one has a yellow background with Minnie, who's surrounded by Sleeping Beauty Castle, Haunted Mansion Ghosts, a corn dog, of course, and other Disneyland designs. And there's a Disney California Adventure Starbucks tumbler, which has a white background and features Mickey Mouse. He's surrounded by the Pixar Pal Around, a slice of pizza, the Pixar Ball, Lightning McQueen, and other California Adventure staples. Every one of these cups hold 12 ounces and cost $27.99. We've got the Up Spirit jersey, my friends. This one is a seriously beautiful jersey with an image of a sunset over Paradise Falls. The front of the Spirit jersey has a purple sky with a silhouette of Carl's house and the Up logo in the balloons making the house float. We spotted this one at World of Disney at Disney Springs and it's also available online at Shop Disney Now too. It is $74.99. The back of the Spirit jersey says Paradise Falls and has the same sunset scene. You can even see Kevin towards the bottom of the jersey. Halloween Crocs have arrived in Magic Kingdom. The Crocs have a black base with spooky Halloween graphics all over, like ghosts with cute hats, bones, pumpkins, and funny faces, and more. The right shoe has Minnie in her cat costume, and the left has Mickey in his pumpkin costume. Each shoe also has a Mickey Halloween charm, and they can be yours for $59.99. You can grab these in Magic Kingdom at all hours of the day. They're not just a Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party item. Now, over at Pin Traders and Epcot, we spotted a new limited edition Donald Duck Magic Band for $58. Bucks. Yep, $58. 58 bucks for a magic band. Mind you, it is designer. The band features Donald Duck in a unique art style with a white Mickey head in the middle. This magic band is limited edition with only 3,000 available. So if you're a fan of Donald Duck, be sure to grab this magic band from Epcot before they're totally gone. Now, if you want even more Disney news, be sure to sign up for our newsletter. It's totally free and the link to sign up is in the description box below this video. Thanks for watching everyone and thanks for listening. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon. Thank you.